Hello everyone and a warm welcome from my side. My name is Ishan Desai. Some of you some of you may already know me as a precise developer and may have communicated with me on various of our community channels. Today as part of my talk I would like to talk about my project adaptive and flexible macro micro coupling software. This project is done together with Benjamin Ukerman and Karina Bringedal at the University of Stuttgart and also Simtech. To explain the concept of this project, I would like to start with a very basic heat conduction example which most of us are quite familiar with. On the figure on the left, you see a domain on which the heat conduction equation is solved. At the top of the domain is a boundary condition with a high temperature and at the bottom of the domain is another boundary condition with a lower temperature. Both the sides of the domain, the left side and the right side are adiabatic walls. So no heat transfer takes place over these walls. Typically when we are solving a partial differential equation to compute the heat conduction or the progression of the temperature over time, we will discretize this domain using a suitable finite discretization scheme. In this particular case, the finite element scheme is used and hence you see these triangular finite elements with which the domain is discretized. Then we saw typically solve the equation at the compute points and get a graph of something like this, which is the temperature progression at a certain point in time. Now let's assume that this heat conduction problem is not only done on one scale, but is in fact two scale. By that I mean that we have some pre-knowledge of the material with which the domain is built. The material has such a microstructure. In this microstructure, we have a square domain with two materials embedded in it. There is a grain material. So the grain is itself shown in a circular shape with blue color and it is packed around by other and another material could be any arbitrary material. In this case, it is shown in the color red. This particular example where such a microstructure is possible is derived from the theory of porous media and the red material that is shown here could also be a void scheme. So we would only have a grain and certain void space surrounding it. For the purposes of this example, let's stick to these two materials. When we have the knowledge that such a material microstructure exists, we know that we are unable to use the quantitative quantities that would be needed to solve the heat e conduction equation at the macro scale or this average scale with which this domain is built. So what we are aware of are the conductivity values of these two materials with which the microstructure is made and also the geometry of the microstructure itself. So if we want to effectively resolve this problem on two scales, so to speak one scale is the macro scale which builds up this average domain and second is the micro scale which builds up the microstructure domain we would have to find a scheme where we resolve this microstructure at every point or in all the points of the domain, derive certain quantities and then use these quantities to solve our original macro problem. The microstructure and particularly of such a circular form can be solved in this manner. Here we have used the phase field technique to have a mathematical representation of the circular grain geometry. So in effect what we have done is we have converted the, this microstructure into a problem of itself. In this problem we are using a phase field variable. Let's say the phase field variable has a value 0 inside this grain and a value 1 at the material outside of this grain. And over the transition layer, so over the boundary where the grain ends and the other material or the void starts, we have a transition zone shown here in the white. Once we have such a mathematical representation of the geometry, we are able to solve certain equations on the micro scale to derive the quantities that are needed to solve the original problem on the macro scale. To put the problem more constructively, let's look at some equations. I don't want to explain all the terms in these equations, but the point is to show you how such a two scale problem looks mathematically with a set of partial differential equations and what all needs to be considered when we are solving the problem on two scales simultaneously. The first important thing is to understand that 
we need to have some sort of definition of where we will solve the microstructure problems with respect to the macro coordinate system. We will look at this in detail in one of the next slides. What is important to note that both the micro problems and the ma macro structure, so this macro domain itself and each micro problem will evolve in time. So we need to solve them simultaneously. A typical macro problem for the heat conduction or thermal conductivity equation would look something like this. Here the Gx is the amount of grain in every microstructure. So kind of a volume fraction ratio of the grain amount in every microstructure at the particular point at which we are solving this equation. And K is the conductivity value also at that particular point. So this is the problem which we need to solve on the macro scale. We are not aware of the value G and the value K at any of the points because of this inherent microstructure. Hence, we try to analyze this microstructure and solve a micro problem. In the micro problem, we would solve such equations. The first equation, some of you may be familiar with as the Allen Kahn phase field equation. As we already saw, we are solving this particular micro problem using the phase field approach and hence we need to have some form of equation which defines the evolution of the phase field over time. For this purpose we are using the Allen Kahn phase field equation. What's important to note here is that this has a term of the temperature itself. This temperature is the temperature on the macro domain. So the evolution of the microstructure is also dependent on the corresponding temperature of that particular point on the macro scale. So this is an information which the macro problem needs to compute and then pass on to the micro problem. Similarly, we have a second equation which we need to solve to get the conductivity value which is necessary to solve the macro problem itself. Even though this equation looks a bit different than the original a thermal conductivity or heat conduction equation that we are trying to solve, it is in fact a homogenized version of the same macro problem. So once we solve these equations, we have some form of upscaling. By upscaling, we mean that we average the quantity over the micro problem and get finally a single value which can be plugged into the corresponding point on the macro discretized version of the macro problem and solve it. So this is typically how a two scale problem would look like. The intention of this project is to tackle such two scale problems using adaptive and flexible coupling software. Now that we have seen a two scale heat conduction example, let's get a bit more background into two scale modeling before we move on to the core concept of this project. There is a certain state of the art that is well defined and that we are aware of from literature and from all the work that has already been done with respect to two scale modeling. The first is that we have a well defined scale separation. This is quite evident in the fields of porous media, biological systems and also many more fields. By scale separation I mean that on the macro scale we have a set length scale. In this particular figure it is shown with the notation capital L and if we zoom in we eventually get to a micro scale which is denoted by the uh, notation of small l. So we have the clear distinction between these two scales and we have a set of equations which are defined specifically for these two scales which can be solved separately. Typically when such two scale behavior exists we are aware that only mic macro scale simulations are not sufficient. So if we only assume certain things about the micro problems and we avoid solving them and only solve the macro scale, then we will not have a good enough understanding or a good enough end result of what is actually happening in the entire domain. At the same time, we are aware that if we start solving micro problems on the entire domain, so let's say we use very, very fine resolution and we say that we will really represent the geometry of every microstructure on whatever finite element mesh or whichever discretization type you use, then this, then representing the entire domain in this way becomes computationally expensive and very fast. So even for medium scale problems, this is really not the way to go.
hence we need to find a balance between solving some micro problems getting the information about the microstructure and then using that to solve our original macro problem on the average scale typically such two scale simulations when they are done so when we uh, want to solve a microstructure and a macro problem these systems are embedded into one code so typically users or experts of the particular application areas like porous media or biological systems will end up writing one code and hence it is very very tightly coupled and also very application specific from the perspective of the assumptions that we can make about the two scale behavior we can note down the following things we can say that whatever discretization we use so we would have to discretize the macro domain in a particular way and whatever discretization scheme we would use on every macro computational node one micro simulation will exist so uh, we, in theory if we the the more we zoom in we might see that at, at a particular area there might exist many many micro simulations but at some point we are limited by the mesh resolution of the macro domain itself and hence we typically assume that with every single computational point on the macro domain one micro simulation will exist and that needs to be solved now if we want to simultaneously solve such micro simulations and one macro simulation we end up with a coupling between one macro domain and several micro domains so it is a coupling where we somehow need so if we look at the problem from the perspective of coupling we need to couple several micro simulations to one macro simulation and this one to many coupling is what we want to target in this project so let's go back to our two scale heat conduction example that we already discussed and now get to the idea of this project in this project we are proposing that we use a micro manager to solve such a two scale problem what do i mean by a micro manager so let's look at this figure uh, from the left hand side going to the right hand side so let's look at the coupling in that manner so on the left you see our original macro domain the this intermittent figure which is a grid is nothing but the representation of this macro domain on the right hand side you now see the representation of the macro domain just that at every computational point a micro simulation has been placed so at every computational point or every quadrature point of this finite element mesh we have one micro simulation which is continuously evolving in time and that needs to be solved so these micro simulations are just independent simulations but if we keep them in to a geometry perspective from the macro domain they would look something like this now the idea of how to do this coupling is that we have another software component called the micro manager which controls all the micro simulations and then handles a one to one coupling with the macro simulation so the micro manager basically has complete control over all the micro simulations by control we mean that uh, the micro manager will initialize all the micro simulations it will transfer the respective data to all of them individually it will run all these micro simulations collect the data and then do the coupling with the macro simulation when we have such a controlling software component as the micro manager we essentially end up converting the set of micro simulations into one single participant so if we look at this from the perspective of the of precise as a coupling library then we now no longer have to couple with each micro simulation individually but we have to only couple with the micro manager so once we have such a micro manager we end up with a one to one coupling which would just be the same as running two participants of coupling in precise as most of you have already done so what should a micro manager be capable of so if you want to have such a micro manager and we want it to work effectively what all features must it consist of our first intention is for it to be usable in various applications and thereby have an application agnostic api and design so it is not our intention to have Uh, the micro manager used only in this particular two scale heat conduction application or applications in porous media or such but we want to make it truly application agnostic 
to also get it in line with the philosophy of precise. Secondly, it should be capable of adaptively controlling micro problems. So we already know from literature that if we start running all the micro problems and if we solve transient problems, so problems which evolve in time, then it's computationally too expensive. Oftentimes we even don't need to do this. But what I mean by that is, let's say, let's consider a part of the macro domain close to this lower boundary. So the lower boundary is fixed at a lower temperature. And as we progress in time, the temperature will propagate or the sink effect will propagate through the domain and we will get such a temperature gradient in one axis. Now you may think that if we look at a computational point very close to this lower boundary, it will not change a lot over time. So if you look at the corresponding micro problem of that particular computational point, we may see that if we look at these two micro problems, which are the which are corresponding to the neighboring computational points close to the lower boundary, over time they will not change a lot. And hence, we don't need to solve both of them. So what we could do is just solve one of them over time and copy over the data to the other micro simulation. So this would mean that we deactivate certain micro simulations and only so solve the ones which are really different and unique. And this is exactly what is meant by having adaptive control of the micro problems. We will also look at this in the next slide that as soon as we have such adaptive control, we also run into load balancing problems. So we will end up with a load imbalance as soon as we run the micromanager in parallel. So such a micromanager would also have to deploy dynamic load balancing techniques. Now that the concept of the micromanager is clear, let's look at certain challenges that we would face in this designing of the micromanager. As we already said, we would need to have adaptive initialization of micro simulations. So we would activate and deactivate micro simulations depending on whether their similar counterparts exist. To do such activation and deactivation, we would have to define a similarity criteria. So we would have a criteria which would determine if two micro simulations are the same or not. If they are same, then we would temporarily deactivate one of them and only run the other one and copy over the data to the deactivated micro simulation. As soon as we have such adaptivity, it would lead to load imbalance and that would lead us to have to implement dynamic load balancing techniques. Let's look at this more from the perspective of a picture to explain this better. So if you look at the three figures on the right hand side, the three top figures, we have three time instances of the micro manager which is being coupled to a corresponding macro problem that is progressing in time. The colors in each figure show the domain decomposition. So each color signifies one rank uh, or one partition of the complete domain. Now, as we go ahead in time, it might very well happen that due to the uh, adaptivity, constantly different micro simulations are getting activated and deactivated. So the situation might arise that if we look at the second uh, slot, we see that this green processor has all the micro simulations deactivated. So this processor is essentially idle and hence we don't have a good load balance. To avoid this, we would essentially have to repartition the domain whenever the adaptivity criterion is employed and si micro simulations are activated or deactivated. This is necessary to have parallel efficiency when we run applications where we would have thousands or millions of micro simulations running in parallel. This is also uh, not something that we predict, but also that's something that is shown from literature. And I want to quote uh, this paper here. So this is the citation where a, s a slightly different problem to this heat conduction problem is shown. We have a domain with uh, adiabatic boundary conditions on all side. And in the lower left corner, we have a perturbation. So an excitement, which then propagates through the domain. There is also a microstructure which exists at every point of this macro domain, which is again similar to a circular grain as shown here. The important graph is this one. We see that the micro simulations close to the perturbation, they are run far more times than the micro simulations which are far away from this perturbation. So if we go to this part of the domain, which is very far away from the perturbation, 
perturbation or even farthest from the perturbation and very close to the adiabatic wall where not much is changing we essentially have simulations which are not run that much so the adaptivity criterion kicks in and we effectively have to run them very very less and hence there is a computational load balancing one important thing to note here is that when we do such a macro micro coupling Uh, between a macro domain and a micro simulations controlled by a micro manager we are essentially doing volume coupling because from the perspective of precise all the computational nodes on the macro domain are going to be defined as a coupling mesh so we need to have efficient mapping methods for such a volume coupling especially in three dimensions and for bigger domains and one of the main challenges is also to make this whole idea of the micro manager and its api really application agnostic the way we are doing this is to deploy the micro manager uh, in various applications so we are working in the areas of porous media and also modeling biological system li systems like human muscle modeling and human liver modeling and we hope to learn from all these applications and eventually end up with a, a software structure which will be application agnostic we already have a working prototype of this two scale heat conduction so the example that i explained to you is uh, already working to some degree and uh, we have the prototype code along with the micro manager script available at this uh, github link so a bit more Uh, into how we are do exactly doing the coupling so we are solving the transient heat conduction equation on both the macro and the micro scale uh, on the macro scale we are solving the original problem on the micro scale we are solving the homogenized version of the problem and at each gauss point of the macro mesh so the finite element macro mesh there exists a micro simulation so if we uh, look at a, a two sets of elements as shown here we would see that at each gauss point we have placed a micro simulation so the data transfer happens in this way in each time step the macro model solves its equation the temperature values are updated at each point these temperature values are sent over to the micro manager the micro manager then initializes all the micro simulations transfers the particular temperatures to each of them then solves all the micro simulations collects all the effective conductivity and the green amount values so the variables g and k that we uh, saw earlier and transfers them back through precise to the micro simulation which are then used to solve and update the solution so this is the two way coupling that uh, is already implemented Uh, to have this working and to stabilize this we have also used the implicit coupling schemes in uh, precise currently we don't have any adaptivity criterion im already implemented in the micro manager so effectively we are running all the micro simulations but we hope to have uh, the adaptivity some form of adaptivity in there soon the numbers that you see here the 1 2 3 and 4 are just to signify that the micro manager itself can be run in parallel so the micro manager is nothing but a python script and you can run it with the mpi run command to run it in parallel and then the domain will be split up uh, into evenly balanced partitions and the micro simulations will be run in parallel this is quite easy to do mainly because each micro simulation for this particular example uh, has periodic boundary conditions so there is no communication between neighboring micro simulations so they are run completely independent of each other and running them in parallel is quite easy this entire example is run using the finite element library nutils so the macro problem and all the micro simulations are both run using nutils and the micro manager script in is run in python is written in python and both the macro and the micro scripts are also written in python so some of the target applications that we are trying to uh, go for in this project so first as i already said is the applications in porous media so this heat conduction example that uh, i have explained now Uh, along with the circular grain structure is derived from the theory of porous media and we want to expand this further to maybe have some flow in there or uh, 
a model with some solute surrounding the grain and such so we would like to add more physics in this direction so there we would have something like a Darcy scale on the macro uh, domain and then really a microstructure which has a more realistic non-circular grain geometry and some dissolution or some complicated flow process in addition to just the uh, conductivity along with this we are also pursuing a macro micro coupling in human liver modeling here we have a set of PDEs which are solved on the macro scale uh, or it is also called as the lobule scale and they are coupled to a cell scale where each simulation solves a set of ODEs. So this would be a macro micro ODE PDE coupling. And we also want to pursue a, a similar macro micro coupling in also human muscle modeling. So now that the concept of the micromanager is uh, clear, you might be wondering, okay, how do I actually do the coupling? So let's say you are working in a particular application area and you have a single physics code which simulates things on the macro scale and you have another single physics code which simulates things on the micro scale. So how do you actually do the coupling? Step one would be to adapt the micro code to be coupled with precise. So I think most of you must have already done this at some point. So this typically involves adding some precise API commands into your code uh, in a minimally invasive way to allow for steering to be done by a precise and also the transfer of data and such. The second step, which is quite critical from the perspective of this coupling is to convert the micro code into a library, which has predefined function names. So, you might have a micro code which you can which is in the form of a script which is directly executable but in this form the micro manager cannot run it so typically what you need to do is convert it into a library which has a set of functions with predefined names so that the micro manager can effectively control the micro simulations the examples of such functions would be initialize solve save state, retrieve state, etc. So in initialize, you would typically define the variables that are necessary to solve the micro simulation. In the solve functionality of the micro simulation, you would actually solve the micro problem and such. So our plan is to release an API which would pre with predefined names of what functions are necessary in the micro problem. So once you have this new structure, then you just need to import the micro simulations in the micro manager and the micro manager would be able to run each micro simulation individually and control them. And the last step would be to modify the configuration file of the micro manager so that the micro manager is aware which data is being exchanged so which data is being given to every micro simulation and which data is being extracted from every micro simulation. Currently this configuration is done through a JSON file uh, which can be written by you too. Once you have done all these modifications then running the macro code and the micro manager is really just the same as running two precise participants. So you just run the macro code in one terminal, the micro manager in the other terminal, and they are coupled to each other, just like two precise participants would be coupled. A short summary of my talk. So the main goal of this project is to develop application agnostic macro micro coupling software. So we really want to have a general adaptive and flexible framework over a period of time. The first prototype of the two scale heat conduction example is already available. I have shared the link with you before. If you have more questions about this example or if you want to try it out and if you also want to discuss more things around the micromanager and load balancing techniques, please feel free to talk to me during this workshop and also afterwards. The main challenge in this project is to develop application agnostic adaptivity criteria. So to have an adaptive control which works for various applications and also to have corresponding dynamic load balancing techniques. So these are the major challenges that we are aiming to tackle. Here is the link to the project description on the Simtech website. Also the link to the example that has been developed and my email for more contact. Thank you for your attention.